Hey guys, and welcome back to History Mysteries, where I talk about interesting and little known facts covering historical happenings from ancient times through to modern history. This week, ahead of Halloween, I'm talking about werewolves. Many people might think that the stories of werewolves originate in Hollywood, with the most famous werewolves being from films such as An American Werewolf in London or even Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. But stories of werewolves can be traced back to Greek mythology and both Greek and Roman literature have stories relating to werewolves. So what is a werewolf? A werewolf from the Old English werewolf, man-wolf, is a human with the ability to shapeshift into a wolf, either purposely or after being placed under a curse, often from a bite from another werewolf, with the transformations occurring on the night of a full moon. Some werewolf myths can be traced back to Proto-Indo-European mythology, where lycanthropy seems to originate as an aspect of the warrior class. The Norse berserker can also ultimately be traced to the same root. The werewolf thus became a widespread concept in European folklore, and this was also taken to the places which were colonised by the European powers, particularly the British, French and German colonies. And these stories of werewolves became combined with any local native stories of shapeshifting. But, as I mentioned earlier, the myth of werewolves dates back much further than medieval folklore, and the term lycanthropy comes from the ancient Greek leucanthropos, from leukos meaning wolf and anthropos meaning human. The Roman writers also mentioned werewolves, although they generally gave them the name versipellis, meaning turnskin. However, the werewolf as we now know it first appeared in ancient Greece in ethnographic, poetic and philosophical texts. References to men changing into wolves are found in ancient Greek literature and mythology. These stories of the transformed beast are usually mythological, although some have a basis in local histories and religious cults. In the 400s BC, the Greek historian Herodotus describes the Nuri, a nomadic tribe of magical men who changed into wolf shapes for several days of the year. The Nuri were from Scythia, land that is now the Crimea. But is Herodotus referring to shapeshifters? This area would have had a very harsh climate for many months of the year and using wolf skins for warmth is not outside the realms of possibility. A more direct reference to potential shapeshifting can be found in the local history of Arcadia, a region in the central Peloponnese of Greece. Here, Zeus was worshipped as Lycian Zeus, Wolf Zeus. In 380 BC, the Greek philosopher Plato told a story in the Republic about the protector turned tyrant of the shrine of Lycian Zeus. The most interesting aspect of Plato's passage relates to this protector turned tyrant, who appears to have been their mythical king, Lycian. Expanded further in many later Greek and Latin texts, most notably Ovid's Metamorphoses, Lycian's story contains all the elements of a modern day werewolf tale immoral behaviour, murder and cannibalism. According to the myth, as told by Ovid, Lycaon tested Zeus's omniscience by serving Zeus roasted human flesh. Zeus realised and turned Lycaon into a wolf. Ovid also places Lycaon's provocative behaviour in testing Zeus as the final straw before Zeus unleashed the flood which serves a similar mythological origin with Noah's Flood and may be based on the same historical event. But that's a story for another time. It may well be that Lycaon's actions of roasting human flesh were not isolated. Literary evidence suggests that the cult members of Lycaon Zeus regularly mixed human flesh into their ritual sacrifice to Zeus. Certainly, it seems that Arcadia came to have strong connections with lycanthropy, with Pliny the Elder recounting another tale. He mentions that in Arcadia, once a year, a man was chosen by lot from the Anthus clan. The chosen man was escorted to a local marsh where he hung his clothes in an oak tree, swam across the marsh and transformed into a wolf, joining a pack for nine years. If during those nine years, he refrained from tasting human flesh. He returned to the same marsh 
swam back and recovered his previous human form with nine years added to his appearance. Some other ancient writers who spoke of werewolves include Pausanias and Virgil. Pausanias also relates the story of an Arcadian man who turned into a wolf after tasting the entrails of a human child sacrificed to Lycian Zeus. Ten years later, the man was restored to human form and later went on to become an Olympic boxing champion. The Roman poet Virgil talks werewolves in the eclogues. He references a man called Morris, who used herbs and poisons from the Pontus, Black Sea, which Morris ate and then turned into a wolf. Pontus is, of course, close to, if not the same area as the Scythians and their wolf skins, mentioned by Herodotus. These ancient accounts all talk of a man turning into a wolf due to the cannibalistic ingestion of a human sacrifice or some association with the Pontus. So where did the association with the moon come from? All of the ancient Greek texts associate werewolves with the night and the woods, and the Roman texts agree with this. But to understand the presence of the moon, we must turn to the tale from Petronius's Satyricon, the longest and most detailed of the Roman werewolf stories. It was written around AD 60, and one of the characters in the story tells a story at a banquet about his encounter with a turnskin whilst on a walk with one of his master's guests. This is my translation of that story. He was a soldier and as brave as hell. So he left as the rooster was crowing, but the moon shone as if it was noon. We got among the tombstones, my man began to go to the graves. I sat about to sing and I counted the graves. Then, as I looked back at my companion, he stripped himself and put all his clothes on the side of the road. My heart was in my mouth, but I stood as still as a dead man. He made a ring of water around his clothes and suddenly became a wolf. Do not think I am joking. I would not lie about this for any fortune in the world. But, as I began to say, after he became a wolf, he began to howl and fled into the woods. At first, I did not know where I was. Then, I went to pick up his clothes, but they had all become stone. Who could be as dead with terror as I? But I drew my sword, and on the whole journey, cut down shadows until I came to my love's house. I went in like a demon, and nearly fainted. The sweat flew down my legs, my eyes were dead, I could scarcely be revived. My dear Melissa began to marvel that I was out walking so late and said, If you had come earlier, you might at least have helped us. For a wolf got into the house and worried all our sheep and churned out their blood like a butcher. But he did not make fools of us, even though he ran away. For our slave made a hole in his neck with a spear. When I heard this, I could not keep my eyes shut any longer. But at clear dawn, I rushed back, like an innkeeper who has been robbed, to the house of my master Gaius. And after I came to that place, where the clothes had become stone, I found nothing but blood. But when I got home, my soldier was lying in bed like an ox, and a doctor was looking after his neck. I understood that he was a werewolf. And so, in one simple story, you can see how the scriptwriters of Hollywood have been able to combine the moon with the ability of a human to switch into a wolf and back again. Coupled with the insatiable desire for flesh while in wolf form, whether that be human flesh or animal flesh. Although, the part about their clothes turning to stone, whilst it amuses me, didn't seem to stick. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments what other mythical origins you'd like me to cover. And please remember to subscribe. For details on upcoming videos and shorter history facts, follow me on Instagram or Twitter, links in the description.